Hey, what's up everybody? It's Don and today, today we're unboxing and testing the Vive Cosmos. That's right. So I can't thank HTC enough for sending this my way. Guys, I love you. This is the best. So today we're going to get it unboxed. We're going to get it hooked up. We're going to play some games. I'm going to give you my thoughts. You guys know the drill. So, all right, let's get in there. And let's take a look the Vive Cosmos. Okay, so man, first, this packaging is amazing. I, you know, I've been a retailer for over 20 years, guys, and this is so retail pop off the shelf friendly, that's not even funny. So you've got the, the product image, obviously the nice, you know, galaxy cosmos coloring all over the box. Uh, and then you've also got the huge ad for Viveport Infinity back here. Now, if you're not familiar with Viveport Infinity, we're gonna get into that later in the video, but it's awesome. It's like the Netflix of VR. So, all right, let's go ahead and get the sleeve off and see what's in the actual box. Okay, so the moment is finally here, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, take the outer sleeve off here. Um, and uh, man, I tell you what, that is a hefty box. It, is, it has got some weight to it. Um, the Vive logo there and uh, yep. Always got to have some tape. Always. All right, there we go. Cut that. And yes, moment of truth. Here we go. Uh, all right, so first thing we see is the download and setup. So it looks like we're going to need to do a, a, a quick download, which we will do here in a second. But we want to look at and see what's in the box. So, all right, um, in the box here, um, we will start with the uh, instruction card here. So, and uh, this also uh, does, don't look at my code, uh, give you your uh, Viveport Infinity offer. So, uh, first thing, right off the bat, you see your setup, what's going to be in the box, and then your Viveport Infinity offer. So, if you're not familiar, you are going to be getting some free Viveport Infinity with this. Like I said, the Netflix of VR. So, all right, looks like we've got box number two here. So box number two, um, looks like that's gonna contain a microfiber cloth. You can never have enough microfiber cloths. Um, looks like we've got a uh, display port to mini display port, good thick cable there. Um, looks like we've got a, uh, a USB-A to USB-A cable. Um, interesting. I'm assuming that is for... Yep, there it is. Uh, let's see, power controller. And I'm assuming this is the link box. Yes, absolutely. So that's what I thought that uh, USB-A to A cable would be. Now, unlike the original Vive link box, you'll see it is a, a, a proprietary connector. So that is not uh, anything that I have ever seen. It does not look like a, a, a standard cable. So here on the back, you've got the uh, the, the standard power, the uh, mini display port, and the uh, the USB 3.0 this time, uh, unlike the original Vive Link box, which was 2.0, uh, and then some sort of a power cable. Uh, definitely the plastic doesn't feel as stout as the original uh, Vive hardware, um, but you know what? I don't care, because that's pretty cool to have that. And then, of course, the power cord. So, all right, that is the contents of box number two. Um, so, um, other than that, we've got some instructions, a couple of stickers here. But you know what? That's not what we're here to see, right? So, what we're here to see is we're here to see the Vive Cosmos. And, oh, here it comes, here it comes. There it is. Oh, yes. Oh, there we go. I probably should have teased with the controllers, but we're going to get right into the headset. So, all right, there she is. And man, I got to tell you, that is a sexy headset. Um, I, I already, I love the coloring. I love this metallic blue 
Um, very, very, very cool. You've got the, uh, the Vive logo here. Um, everything is nicely wrapped. Uh, the, the, the headphones are just totally wrapped in bubble tape here. Uh, seem to be the same as the Vive digital audio strap. Um, and then, of course, the cable with, uh, once again, that proprietary connector that I was talking about there. Uh, so, uh, looks like you've got your um, IPD slider here, um, and then, of course, all your cameras, and we'll get into all of that here in just a minute. So, beautiful headset. Um, let's see here. Oh, man, so much nose flap there. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. Um, well, of course you can, because I can just uh, flip this up out of the way. So yeah, the nose flap, man. There's like nose flap for miles on this thing. Um, and uh, yeah, your, your standard Vivi foam. So that's definitely going to be the first thing I look into is, is which VR cover do I have that already fits this uh, until they come out with a solution of their own. So all right, uh, headset we will definitely take a, a deeper look at after this unboxing. Um, so the, the thing that I have been very interested to see is actually these guys, the controllers. So the controllers, I'm going to say it right off the bat. Okay, I just call things like I see it. That is a complete and total utter ripoff of the Oculus Touch controller. But God bless you for doing it because these guys, the Vive Wands, were the most horrible controller I have ever, ever had to use in my entire life. I'm going to say it right now. Those things sucked beyond belief. So at least now we've got something that parodies the touch controllers. But man, right off the bat, and I don't even have the batteries in them. I'm going to tell you, the weight on these is way different. These feel more akin to the original touch controllers but just a little more top heavy, obviously, because of this very thick ring uh, across the top. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I could like whack somebody with this thing. I, I, this is amazing. Uh, triggers feel good and clicky. Um, everything seems to click down. Oh, yep, I can press forward and click in on the thumbsticks. Looking at you, Index. Um, so very very nice controllers i can't wait to get them powered up and see all the lights turned on that's going to be great and of course test this theory that they only get two hours of battery life i don't know i, I think that's uh, i think we're going to debunk that so all right that seems to be the contents of the box i can't wait to get this thing hooked up and 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 set up and test it in some gameplay Okay, so what you want to do first is you want to go to the uh, vive.com slash setup. Now you'll see it redirected me to the U.S. setup. I'm assuming it'll redirect you to the setup for the country of your choice. So after that, uh, basically we're going to install the Vive software. Uh, then you're going to basically get it all set up. It's going to set up the room. So let's go ahead and get that downloaded and start the install. Boom. And very quick, yeah, I mean, super fast internet. So, all right, let's uh, install it. Okay, so um, definitely uh, it is going to drop 18 and a half gigs on your hard drive. So, you know, make sure that you do have space. I did have to move mine, as you see, uh, off of the default C drive. So, all right, let's go ahead and get it installed. <laughs> That's cool. Ah, oh, I like that graphic. Okay, that's very cool. How it's showing all the different logos of all the different games in Viveport. So, this, you know, this will be my first time experiencing Viveport, and I gotta say, I've always thought that that would be a great idea. I mean, I have been a Netflix subscriber since the very beginning days of Netflix. And, you know, to, to be able to just pay a monthly fee and get access to what a lot of us content creators get access to, quite frankly, you know, it, it's amazing. I mean, when you have all you can eat 
uh, VR at your fingertips. Okay, it's all installed, so the last piece of the puzzle, I gotta plug this into that link box up there, get those controllers paired up, and uh, start exploring Viport, so, all right, let's go. Okay, so let's go ahead and get it fitted to my head, and then we will go ahead and click that Start Exploring button, finally. So, all right, let's, uh, hey, I'm gonna put on my glasses, uh, so I see how it fits with the old glasses, because that's been a big, big thing that a lot of people have been asking me to test. So, uh, first and foremost, I love the, the, the fact that it just flips up like that. I, that's always so much easier to put on when the headset halo flips up and then you can just put the face mask to your face and then pull it back so loving that right off the bat great design choice there HTC so all right let's see let's see if it fits with the old glasses then so okay I gotta say that's a that's a nice wide eye box um, so let's go ahead and pull it down very good very good now, you know, I, I gotta say though, it, it is creaking a little bit. It's, it's, it's like this, this inner plastic. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the microphone. Uh, it, it's, it's almost like it's not clipped in very well. Um, so, uh, dial moves very nice and smooth. Nice little tiny little clicks. Uh, nothing click, 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 clickety clackety, but uh, you can definitely feel it click. So you have incremental turn there. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, there we go. Get that all dialed in right. Obviously, the uh, headphones here very, very, very similar to the uh, the Vive and the Vive Pro Deluxe audio strap. Uh, so uh, no difference there. And uh, taking the uh, the top strap design there from the Rift S, which, you know, I found very comfortable. Um, I, I do find the Rift S to be one of the most comfortable VR headsets that I've ever worn. And, and you know, so far, guys, I got to tell you, this one kind of parodies it. Now, right now, I don't have the display on, and I, and I don't have the display on for a reason. So, you know, because I, I am going deep. I'm going deep down this rabbit hole. So I wanted to see if there was any light leakage, and <clears throat> I gotta say, there there is. I, I, I seem to be getting some sort of light leakage from somewhere up here, which is weird, because you wouldn't think that that would have any. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I am seeing uh, a light that, that kind of shines through and then beams off the lenses without the unit being powered. So, uh, now when the screen is illuminated, that might be different. I don't know, but uh, so far I, I put it on my head and I thought the screen would come on immediately and it didn't. So maybe now it's time to click start exploring. So let's try. Okay, and boom, you can flip it up love that so no right. oh, and of course <laughs> of course we have to sign in and create account okay so okay so here we go so now we have finally gotten to the device setup for the cosmos here so we're gonna go ahead and have to download a couple more files looks like and there you have it and then our health and safety warning and next <laughs> and now we have to install uh, some steam vr stuff so lots and lots of stuff to install here but we do get to look at really really cool 3D renders of the headset while we do it. So, talking a little bit about the fit there, which we have already done, obviously. And you know, I, I gotta say, and I, I think this was commented on in, in another First Impressions video by one of my, uh, my, my peers out here, it is it, unlike some of the Windows Mixed Reality headsets that flipped up, they always seem like they were like way too low. Um, this one actually flips up nicely out of my way. I, I do see it kind of, you know, arching back into my vision right here, but it is nothing that is actually 
actually impeding my ability to look in any direction. So, so you know, I don't know. Some people are fans of the flip-up design. Some people are not. I, I personally like it. Uh, the pass-throughs are neat, you know, especially like what we have right now with pass-through plus over on the Rift side with a stereo correct pass-through. Uh, this also has that uh, ability, and, and I cannot wait to test it out once the software is installed because unlike the Rift S, this one's pass-through is apparently in color. Uh, a, a very low-grade, blobby, blurry color, but it's in color. So, um, very, very interested to check that out. So, as we wait and I ramble and uh, my shed Wi-Fi downloads all this stuff very slowly. Now is the time, not Sprockets We Dance, no. Now is the time that I fast forward all this. Okay, so now here we are at the uh, hardware setup steps. So looks like we've got to install the link box. Um, okay, so uh, prepare for setup for room scale VR. You need a space where you can move freely. The recommended minimum play area is six feet by five feet. Now I do have that here in the shed, but uh, I normally confine myself over to the green screen area. Uh, keep your player area clean and safe and keep your room bright and avoid large mirrors or reflectors. That is very important with these types of headsets. You do not want to have anything reflective. So uh, cover that stuff up. Uh, avoid an empty room with plain walls. Uh, you know, it's got to have some definition to lock on to with the cameras. So be aware of that. Um, okay. So, um, the item in my package was the link box, and I have installed said link box, and I have plugged in said link box, and I have connected said link box to my PC. Okay, headset, uh, time to connect my headset to the VR system, yay, finally getting there. Okay, detecting. Yes, detected. Detected. We like that. Ah, oh, an updating firmware. Okay. <clears throat> so, you know, it, it's always these day one things, guys. It, uh, so, now now I've got to wait. And we wait and we wait and we wait. It's like an old South Park song. Isaac Hayes, chef. So, man. Okay. Oh, wait, I heard, I heard the ding. So, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're so close now. It's like, I almost don't want to move, you know? It's like, I, I, this don't turn off the headset or remove the cable. And, you know, I, I'm an old PC jockey. Y you don't want to lose power during a firmware update. It, it can be bad. Just saying. So, oh Lord, everything is so slow. But that's the price you pay for being an early adopter. Okay, all right, we're finally here. We are step four: uh, controllers. Now, you know, I, I talked about this just a minute ago, but now I've got the batteries in them, and these things actually have some heft. And, and I'm not going to lie, I like that. I, I did not like how flimsy the, uh, the the new touch controllers felt compared to the originals. I, so, so these, to me, felt feel more like a redesigned, upgraded version of the original touch controller. So props to HTC there. Now, you can see very, very, very thin thick ring here and and i think we're about to light them up and turn them on but I, I wanted to note a couple of features of it that i noticed right off the bat uh the, the split trigger that that's really interesting um, i'm gonna have to get used to that that's not something over the 
last three years. I've gotten so used to touch controllers. Uh, so uh, that that's definitely everything else seems to be in the exact same spot it would be with the Oculus Touch controllers. Um, and uh, oh, one other thing that I saw. Now, while I was inserting the batteries, I found this interesting. It is the same type of insertion um, as the Oculus Touch controllers. However, this one is just a flimsy plastic door, so no magnets on there, guys. Uh, that part, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna dock you some points there. That feels really cheap. I'm I'm not liking that. Uh, so I, I do like those magnetic slide and locks on the uh, on the the original touch controllers. The new touch controllers they come off when you're when you're in an intense game. Uh, but but I you know I don't know. Uh, overall, the controllers also have a a grip to them right here. There is a really gritty feel to them. Don't know if I like that or not. Uh, I'm very tactile, so I, I don't know if I like the actual texture uh, of the controllers right here. So definitely going to be uh, looking for some grips. Um, I'm sure there's companies like Mammoth and people like that that will be putting out grips for these uh, pretty soon. So, all right, let's go ahead and get them set up. Um, all right, so we've got all the batteries installed. Yes, I've inserted the batteries and uh, right touch controller. Oh, sorry, I said touch controller. Uh, turn on the right controller. There we go. Ooh, ooh. I've seen it. I've seen it in pictures, but but seeing it in person, I'm a sucker for stuff like this. Ah, uh, okay. I, I dig that. Now, obviously, if it's going to cost me battery, though, I, I don't know. Now, I'd say, ooh, yeah, well, let's turn it off. Well, no, you can't because that's how the, the cameras track the controllers, guys. This is what it locks onto is this pattern. Uh, unlike the touch controllers, which use the, the blinking IR emission. So, so oh man, but I love that. I, I thought it was cool when I got my Windows Mixed Reality ones and you can see the little dots on them, but man, that, that's like so freaking Tron looking. All right, all right, so big pluses uh, HTC on the controllers thus far. Now, on the aesthetics of the controllers, I have not used the controllers just yet. So, all right, let's click next. Everything is paired. Set those down. I also, they, 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 they actually, I'm going to say that real quick. I don't know if you can see the whole width of my, my chair here, but they, they, they actually sit very nicely on those rings because the rings are elongated. Uh, they don't feel like they're going to topple over uh, the way that the new touch controllers feel. So, next. Okay. And before you continue, uh, you've finished setting up Vive Cosmos hardware. Next, you'll be guided to set up the boundaries of your play area. While playing VR content, you can check the four tracking status icons on the Steam VR window. All right. So currently, I'm seeing idle, not tracking, off or not connected, and ready. So, um, and do I have, um, okay, so I don't see, so maybe I should just hit launch room setup, like the damn software says, Don, just read, there we go. There's my little weird icons. Never seen icons so weird in Steam VR, but I'll take it. So, all right, and now it seems like we're jumping over to a very familiar looking setup here. Um, so this looks like it's probably gonna be uh, the Steam VR setup, uh, but no, oh, we're still in Vive here. Just looks very similar. All right, time to put on my headset. Finally, we have finally. Okay, so, you know, uh, I know we don't have to set up base stations and anything. This is one where I will say that that I, between this and the Rift S, when, when I got my Rift S from Oculus, I just plugged that bad boy in and bam, bam, downloaded that software, and I was pretty much up and running 
quickly because uh, I just stood in the middle of this room and I just drew my boundaries. So I don't know. We're gonna see what happens here. Uh, hopefully, it will be a similar experience, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bank on that. So all right, let's do it finally. Oh, okay, cool. So it is a similar experience. Um, I am seeing. <laughs> okay, this this is interesting. Um, it, it it is a stereo pass through. Um, I am seeing a stereo correct pass through. Um, uh, yep, yep. Okay, it is stereo correct, um, and uh, it's in color. Uh, so this is interesting. It almost makes me wonder if there are some plans for some AR stuff going on in here like they're doing with the Vive Pro. Um, so, all right. So we got our fitment right. Let's tighten this down just a little bit more. Okay, uh, so I grab the controller and I put on the wrist strap and I pull the controllers. It is saying that it's too dark in here. Now, it is a little dark over in that corner. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it that. But uh, it's definitely not too dark. I'm sitting right next to two lights. So maybe it's the lights. I don't know. We will, uh, we will endeavor to move on. Done it. Real space. Controllers on. Put on the headset. All right, time to put on the headset. Let's round two. All right. So here we go. I can see the pass through okay i've got the controller i will do exactly as it says put on the wrist straps and fully pull the trigger to continue fully pulling the trigger Environment is too dark for tracking to be accurate. Adjust lighting or move to brighter space and do not block the headset cameras. Okay, so obviously I'm going to call BS on that. Um, I am standing under what would be the equivalent of a 400 watt um, fluorescent uh, daylight bulb. Um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, it's a bright white bulb. Uh, and, and then back here, I've got a, a C by GE, uh, just regular Google bulb that changes colors. Uh, there, there's no way. I have not had any problems with my Oculus Quest tracking in here. I have not had any problems with my uh, Oculus Rift S tracking in here. I have not had any problems with my Samsung Odyssey Plus tracking in here. So... I don't know guys, right off the bat, I'm not having a good experience, I can't get up and running. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and try this again. Um, I have done a full reset of the headset and there has been some new software that came out tonight from HTC. We're, we're pre-launch, man, we're like less than 24 hours from launch of this headset and so far mine's still not working. So, I, I don't know, oh, HTC, I hope you guys pull it together. So let's, let's see if I can finally get past the setup. Okay, so there it goes. It says to get my controllers, uh, which I have right here, and to uh, pull a trigger. Now this is where I've been getting stuck, as you guys just saw. Uh, it, it won't scan the room, and it tells me the room is too dark. Now, unlike what you saw last time, I figured out there is an HMD mirror, old school style, where you see the two eyes, and so you guys are seeing exactly what I'm seeing through the cameras of the headset, so you can see my lights in the room, and <laughs> there is no way it is too dark in here. So, alright, I hope this new software fixes it.
Your environment is darker than we recommend. Adjusting your lighting or moving to a brighter play space can help improve the experience. So you know what? Oh, it's scanning. It is working though. Okay. Okay. I think we're finally, we're finally getting somewhere. 37, 40, 48, 50. Oh, wait, wait, here we go. Here we go. Oh, is it gonna work this time? 90. I've never seen it go above zero, so this is a good thing. 100, yes, victory. Okay, so now it wants me to reset the floor. It still keeps telling me that the, oh, wow, okay. So, um, you know how I was saying that it was kind of a little bit of a rip off of the touch controllers here? <laughs> So this is feeling kind of like a ripoff of the Oculus setup as well, uh, where I have to actually like, you know, move the controller to the floor. So I don't know, you know, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not hating on that because, well, parity and standardization in VR right now is a good thing. That way you can grab any brand of headset and the experience is going to be the same. So just say it. A TV is a TV is a TV. So, all right. <clears throat> my boundaries so for tonight we're just going to do a little sliver right here and it's interesting that you guys are actually getting to see this oops okay well i got the track lots of tracking over there in that dark corner let's see and there right. we little tiny boundaries but that's all right Play area is too small. Ah, for the purposes of tonight's review, we will just do standing seating, uh, seated mode. Wow, we're finally in! Oh, we're finally in and I've got no audio. Uh, you've got to be kidding me. Alright. Hold on. Cool logo, though. Oh, I'm digging it. The higher res, you definitely can see it with the uh, particle effects back there. You can use your lens to discover other worlds. Okay. Travel to them. Access Sweet. tools and other useful features. Okay. Point your oh. controller at the lens and use the joystick to scroll up and down. All right, I will do that. So, okay, so this is, I guess, uh, HTC's interface. Uh, so kind of similar to uh, Dash, lens, um, I'm assuming. Use the joystick to scroll up and down. Okay, way, very cool. You can always return here to Origin by selecting the Origin button on the lens. Okay. Point at the Origin button on the left side of the lens and use the trigger to select it. Cool effect. The lens gives you access to your full library as well as the Viveport Marketplace. To navigate between these views, point at the Vive logo below the lens. Okay. Go ahead and open Viveport by pointing at the icon and pressing the trigger. Here you can discover new content, titles, and worlds to visit. Nice. Okay. Congratulations. You're ready to begin your journey. Sweet. Head over to Viveport to discover new experiences. Or press the Vive button to close your lens and continue to explore Origin. Okay, I will do that. So... Congratulations. Ready to begin your journey. Congratulations. You're ready to begin your journey. Okay, so let's see here. All right, so there you have it, guys. Um, it looks like I am finally in, and uh, yeah, you know, it took a lot getting here, but so far, so good. I am not hating on this, this lens. This, this is like really cool. I, I'm not hating on this, so all right, and then you can kind of okay, so yeah, you don't even have to kind of come out of that into a full screen or anything. So this has got all your Vive Port content right here, and like the lady said, we've got our overview, our library, and our Vive Port. Currently, my library um, is uh, oh, actually, wait a minute, that's pulling in my Steam library as well. Okay, very nice. Uh, just thought that would pull in the Vive Port stuff. 
So very cool there. Now, Vive 4, you know, I said that earlier. It It is like the Netflix of VR. And oh, I've got a night mode. got a vivid mode. Sorry, I'm like a, a, a kid in a candy shop right now. So, and, and I, you know, I'm going to do a whole other video on Vive Port, guys. This, this one is more about the Cosmos. Um, but we will look for a video on my channel shortly uh, explaining all about Viveport. So, okay, lens settings. Um, okay, so you know what? We'll get into all of this later because once again, like I said, this is a this is a uh, um, a hardware review, not a software review. But God, it's the first time in here, and I want to play with all this stuff so bad. So, um, already got to tell you, I love the 3D portal look uh, of of the lens here. Uh, so very very cool there. Um, and you know, I I guess this is my first time to kind of see the screens on the Cosmos here, and I, I gotta say, they are updated, but I, I also have to be critical, so, you know, some things that I said I was definitely gonna look for was going to be black levels, so first and foremost, I can tell you, standing in here in the old Steam, you know, VR loading area, the the, the blacks and the mountains and the sky there <clears throat> looks great, I, I mean, absolutely looks fantastic uh it looks just like i remember it being on like the original vive or the original riff so it almost has an oled look even though you know we all know this is an lcd rgb stripe screen um <clears throat> the other thing is is text readability text is very very readable in this headset. I mean, the, the the text looks phenomenal. Everything is very crisp. The colors. <clears throat> Colors are popping really nicely, but, but, SDE. So, not going to lie, I am seeing quite a bit uh, of a very fine mesh L uh, uh, SDE uh, on the bright contrasting areas here. Now, I, I don't know if it's going to be enough um, to, to, to really see in game, you know, but it's one of those things that I am looking for it. Uh, so I can tell you, I am seeing some SD. Okay. So, uh, you know, I did not expect this. Uh, when, when I clicked the launch into the Vive port VR, I, I did not expect this type of an interface, but man, let me tell you, this is pretty freaking cool. I am not hating on this at all. Uh, you know, now it's kind of like the old Oculus, uh, the, you know, where you were kind of overlooking the city. So I can't uh, find any way to actually move through this space. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it does seem to be that I'm kind of stuck on this platform and I've just got my, you know, my, my library and my access here. Um, so, uh, yes, I understand. Yes, we can swipe. Okay. So, but um, man, I'm, I'm digging that. I'm digging it. So loving this interface. Uh, you know, I, I do love my Oculus home. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I kind of miss the old Oculus home sometimes where I, it was a cool background, a cool environment that just allowed me to load things. Now, since I am in this new brighter environment though, and, and we kind of left off just a second ago talking about the screens, I'm going to continue that. So, it, here, now that I'm in the brighter environment, I am seeing some things that are kind of reminiscent of the old vibe, and that is, yes, it is my dreaded nemesis, the the the, the god rays, and um, you know, I gotta tell you, it's not as bad, um, you know, where you have a little contrast of the light and the dark, um, but it is still that you see the concentric rings and and that is to me i don't know i hate those types of fresnel lenses where i i mean i can take a little beam of light every once in a while but if it's enough for me to actually like right now i'm kind of looking up and i can totally i could count the ring it's it's it's, it's like looking at the 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 the, the cross section of a, a great oak tree you know i mean there's just ring 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 and is it something that I can overlook? Sure. During gameplay, it's not going to bother me any in any way, shape, or form. 
except for the fact that I know that it's there and it, it, it just in bright scenes like this, it, it's definitely lighten up those rings just like it did on the original vibe. So that is a problem that I'm, I'm going to say they didn't fix. Uh, so, um, IPD slider. Another thing I noticed, uh, IPD slider is a little wonky. Um, it, it's very loose feeling. And I noticed that, uh, you know, tonight I, I took this over and I showed it to a couple of people, uh, at Splitverse. And I'm going to give a shout out to, to my friend, Logan Theobald. Yeah, you guys may know him. He's like a super high in a high up beat saber player. Um, and, and he was playing with it and he, and he played a little beat saber in it and, and he came out of it. And the first thing he said is, is the damn, it, that it shook all over his head. So, you know, I always like to give my HMDs what I call the shake test. And there you go. I mean, if I just like barely kind of shake my head like that, I mean, the whole thing, there, there's no way for me to actually get it to feel tight against my head, uh, or my face. So just like my Odyssey plus, it might take a little little bit of modding where I'm going to have to put some Velcro straps uh, on the side to kind of pull this. And, and I can tell you just by doing this, when I do pull it like that, oh, the FOV gets a nice bump. And that's the other thing that I was looking at. It, the FOV is exactly the same as the original vibe. I, I am not noticing any, any increase in the FOV, which you know, I don't know, at this higher resolution, it, it is crisper, it is nicer, the SDE is way more minimal, but but I have been very spoiled with my Pimax headsets and the, and the FOV, so that is something I want to see all manufacturers increasing going forward. Um, this one is doable, uh, the screen is gorgeous um, so far tracking is decently solid it's got a little hitch there a little hitch here uh setup was a nightmare just kind of recapping as we go um let's see what else what else was i wanting to to talk about with this headset you know i got just a few more things to say and then i think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up because by god this video is like almost an hour long but I wanted to be in depth about this, you know. I really want to like this headset. I, it, you guys know, I've always been more uh, into the Oculus ecosystem, and you know, like I've been dipping my toe in the Pimax water and the the, the Windows Mixed Reality water a little bit, but. I've always been curious about Vive, and I did not have a good experience with the original Vive, uh, so I always stuck to my Rift, but I thought, you know, this one, high resolution, inside out tracking, maybe they've nailed it this time. So just kind of recapping a few things about the Vive that I've noticed, and then we'll wrap this up. But, you know, talking about the comfort, uh, you know, they, they definitely did okay with the comfort here. The, the Halo strap is not bad. Um, I, I'm kind of getting spoiled to that. Uh, the Odyssey Plus was horrible, but like the Rift S is good, and you know the PlayStation VR is excellent. And and now this one, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I don't hate on the strap. The the foam, the the foam definitely is that default crap foam that you get with every VR headset. I don't like the feel of that. So hoping VR cover steps in. We all know they will to kind of, you know, make it a little bit more of a comfortable headset. Now, one thing I wasn't expecting, I really don't like the flimsiness of all of this. I mean, you can see it just like click, 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 come, comes in and out, and you kind of hear it creak as it moves on your face. So, I don't know, that, that hopefully that'll be a completely changeable uh, interface, maybe VR cover, or somebody else will cover that with Mo. Um, you know, the, the, the nose flap here, I normally don't like these nose flaps. I don't like the feeling of anything touching my nose. I'm, I'm happy to say this one completely blocks out the light and I don't feel it. So way to go HTC on that. Um, there, there was a little bit of light leakage from the top, like I, like I, you guys saw earlier in the video. Hopefully you watched the whole thing. Um, and, and the IPD slider, it, it does feel a little loose, a little wonky. So I don't know. Um, you know, the things that I'm most in concerned with in a VR headset, obviously, are visuals. To me, this is a visual experience. VR should be a feast for the senses and the eyes. And visuals, 
Okay, it, nothing to write home about, and you know, I, I kind of was hoping for a little bit better. It, it, it's a very high resolution panel uh, for a Gen 1.5, still not going to call this a Gen 2 headset. Um, God rays, however, you know, a lot of the newer headsets, the Oculus Rift S, I don't notice God rays very often anymore. Uh, even, even in my Pimax, my Pimax 5K Plus with the huge field of view, I don't notice very many God rays. Here, unfortunately, I still saw some God rays on the, the high contrast scenes. And the most unfortunate part is, is that it's the same type of God rays that we had in the OG, the original Vive, which it, it lights up those rings. And that, to me, is one of the worst types because everything kind of looks smudged when it does that. Um, you know, the God rays are one thing. Now, a lot of the switch of these new modern L uh, L HMDs to LCD screens has been kind of concerning for a lot of people, and it's been hit and miss. I mean, you know, even the Rift S, the Pimax, the other headsets that I play with, uh, they, they are also LCD. Black levels, not usually the best. I gotta say, I was pretty impressed with the black levels and the color pop here in the in the Vive Cosmos. So way to go with the screens in there, guys. Um, the, the colors looked good. The, the brightness was very bright and clear. I, the text was great and readable. Um, however, because we're still rocking, you know, I guess almost the same lenses, uh, kind of go back to the concentric rings, as I mentioned just a minute ago, they, they're still there. And that to me just, just kills the whole experience. Um, so um, FOV has changed not one bit. It, it, it literally seems to be the same FOV uh, as the original Vive, and that's unfortunate as well. Pass-through was kind of cool, seeing it in color, still really blurry. Uh, you know, I could just go on and on and on. Audio was decent. Obviously, you guys heard, though, in that last segment, the microphone, just like the original Vive, sucks in this headset. So come on, HTC, throw us content creators a bone. I, I don't always want to use my room mic here. I, I'd love to have high-quality audio. Uh, the Rift S mic sucks. This one sucks. Pimax mics are great. Index mics are phenomenal. So take heed, guys. Put good microphones in your products. Not just for the streamers and the recorders and people like me, but for the multiplayer gamers. Who wants to hear a shitty mic on a multiplayer uh, game, you know? So I'm going to dock them big time. Mic really bad in this. So... Um, the other thing, the controllers. So we're going to take a look at the controllers, a last look here. So at first glance, I, you know, I said in the, in the beginning, I love these controllers because of the aesthetic. Um, after playing with them, I'm going to kind of back that off a little bit. I still like them. I'm, I'm on the fence. I, I definitely like them better than the original Vive ones. You guys heard me in the beginning. I hate that controller. That controller is the worst controller that's ever existed, and it needs to be burned with fire. So these, I don't know, they feel good in my hand. I do like a weightier controller, but as I started playing, I noticed something. The weight is not balanced very well, and, and, it, and it tends to make me want to pull my wrists inward like that. Uh, also, reaching out for the buttons. The button placement seems a little bit too far for my hand. Um, and then, obviously, I alluded to it earlier, I do not like the textured feel here or the flimsiness of the battery covers in these. Um, tracking was also another thing. I, I don't think they were tracked very well. I did finally get into some gameplay. I know you guys don't see it in this video. There will be some other gameplay. I am going to use the headset on the channel. I'm going to give it its fair shot. Um, but um, gameplay, the, the tracking just kind of felt slightly off. I don't know how to describe it. It, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good 
either. Uh, so definitely got some ways to go on the tracking. Um, and that, you know, could have been my lights. This thing yelled at me for days about my lights. You guys saw it. And then, then I took it over to the Splitverse studio and then we had the opposite. Then it was the lights are too bright. And, and then it was, there wasn't enough uh, markers on the walls. I, I, I looked at my friend Kaz and Cherry's video and, and she actually had to put markers on her green screen walls back here. So HTC, one other thing, that's not going to help you if the streamers, the, the people who like me are in nice big green areas which you can't see because you see a nice pretty picture projected on it if we can't use your headset with reliable tracking in green cubes for mixed reality in 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 green walled rooms like what i have here that's going to be a problem so you're, you're going to not see a lot of the streaming community coming out to support the headset. So definitely might want to work on that as well. But other than that, guys, um, I never did uh, the, uh, you know, real quick back to the controllers. I never did uh, hit even 50% and I've been playing with these things for the better part of two days now. So I don't know about this, the controllers only last two hours thing. Now I have had pretty short sessions and then they've been turned off and then they've been turned back on. So I'm gonna, I'll update my description for the video um, after some uh, uh, additional testing to see if these bad boys uh, lose battery anytime soon. But you can see after two days of playing, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, um, they are still rocking and rolling. So, um, all right, guys, that's it. I, I don't really know what else to say about the Vive Cosmos other than what you're probably wanting to know. Would I buy it? So that is the question. And, you know, I want to. I, I want to love this headset. I love the look of it. It feels good. It, it, it's cool. It's got built-on audio, which, which I think was a huge fail for Oculus to take off. But for 700 US dollars, is it worth your money over something like the Rift S? And quite frankly, I'm going to be very honest, guys. I'm going to say right now, at this time, no, it is not. Um, until HTC fixes the tracking, until they fix some of the other things to make the setup a little easier, I just don't see the price differential between what you get in the Oculus Rift S and what you're going to get with the HTC Vive Cosmos being a plus. So uh, I like it, don't get me wrong, and I, and I do definitely thank HTC for sending it out. Guys, this is great and I will play with it, I will use it on the channel. Um, but unless the price came dramatically down, this is not something I could recommend at this time. So, all right, I am going to leave links for everything. I'm going to timestamp this video. So if you don't want to watch the whole almost one hour saga of me and the Vive Cosmos, uh, you can just uh, click those pretty little links. But for me, guys, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was a long one. Um, if this was your first time coming by the channel, thank you so so much for coming by to check out what I do here at VR Gamer Dude. Uh, and if you liked what you saw, man, smash subscribe, ring the bell. That way you get notified when I post something new. I would appreciate it. Really want to hit 10,000 subscribers this year, guys, and I can only do it with your help. So, all right, that's it. I'm out. This is Don, VR Gamer Dude, signing off. Peace.